good morning good morning everybody i hope you all are well let's we continue our next part of the chapter caste reforms caste reforms casteism casteism in indian society casteism in indian society it was a result of a old varna system system in which the divide it was uh, in which the society it was divided into the four important castes brahmin kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras the last two sections in society shudras and uh, <coughs> and vaishyas they were basically considered as a inferior as uh, by the upper two castes brahmin and uh, kshatriyas in a many sphere of a society they were not allowed to be the part of a public ceremonies and fetch a water from from the common ponds and lakes especially as the shudra community so casteism is so it was rigidly followed in indian society the casteism had existing in india existed in india since ancient times when the colonial period began indian society was divided into a number of the caste at the lower level were the people who worked hard to keep the cities clean cities and villages clean the upper caste considered their touch impure and called them untouchables the so called untouchable untouchables had to live in separate specially demarcated areas they were not allowed to draw water from the public wells or to use the public transport they were denied access to the temples and schools in short they were denied basic rights to live with dignity over the 19th and 20th century caste caste system underwent the many changes as a result of several measures and reforms there were also the social reform movements in many part of india changes in a caste system changes in caste system caste system changes in a caste system apart from the demanding equal rights for women and social reformers also fought against the caste system that was prevalent in india during the early early of 20th century british rule thought uh, thought to improve and to change in the indian society which in the long run helpful reduce the caste orthodoxy in which the first effort as they introduced a uniform administration administrative legal and political system that treated all castes equally second one as they modified they modified the british army in which they recruit the indians not on behalf of the caste they were recruited on the behalf of the eligibility a new system third one as a new system of a mass transport such as the railways introduced by the britishers allowed people of a different caste to travel together thus people of a different caste got opportunities to interact and mix with the one another britishers opened the educational institutes equally for the upper caste and the lower caste people to which they attain the education and work for their uh, well being in society they uh, the institute set up by the british for spreading the western education were open to all section of society children of a lower caste uh, lower caste access to the educational resources and complete their need of the education british economic policies led to the widespread land landlessness deindustrialization and reindustrialization due to the these developments 
many people left their traditional occupations and migrated to the cities and towns for the search of the employment and better living conditions some also went to the work in the plantations in assam mauritius and other countries on factories and plantations they worked together regardless of their caste and social background to to protect the these people from a such system of the casteism there was a large number of a social reformers they were social reformers they work in which the first name as uh, coming ahead as the jyoti rao phule jyoti rao phule first as the jyoti rao phule jyoti rao phule jyoti rao phule he belonged to a family of a flower sellers he attacked the brahmins claim that they were superior to others since they were aryans he argued that jyotirao phule argued that aryans being the foreigners this is as the truth because the aryans they invaded they came to india around 1500 bc and the other lower caste these are the original inhabitants original inhabitants of india especially they were living in a indian peninsula indian peninsula to eradicate such problem of the caste discrimination jyotirao phule founded the satyashodak samaj or society satyashodak satyashodak samaj samaj satyashodak samaj in 1873 in 1873 he founded the satyashodak samaj an organization whose primary aim to improve the conditions of the oppressed classes and propagate the idea of equality among all castes he gave great importance to education because he re realized that the brahmins dominated the lower caste by keeping them illiterate he founded a library for the low caste people and a school for low caste girls also he educated his illiterate wife savitri bai phule who later became as a teacher herself at the school founded by him school founded by him in maharashtra clear this was as the first social reformer which was worked for the which was worked against of the caste system he wrote a book jyotirao phule wrote a book named as gulam giri means slavery means slavery because in a medieval age slavery it was uh, existed over the indian subcontinent in which a large number of the asians asians and the africans these were exported towards the america and the europe for as the slaves they sold in the markets but during the british age this slavery it was as the illegal now the next one as the dr bhimrao ambedkar second social reformer b r ambedkar b r ambedkar for the removal of a casteism in india ambedkar it worked as more efficiently it were it basically belong from the mahar community and at the childhood age it was not allowed to attain the education but still it attained the education by sitting the outside the class ambedkar it was born in a mahar family from a early uh, early age he experienced the caste discrimination in school he was forced to sit outside the classroom on the ground and was not allowed to drink the water from the taps that upper caste children basically used the important work of a b r ambedkar is as the constitution making of a indian constitution 
in which he procured protect uh, to which the he protected the untouchables in india untouchables in india but before of its ambedkar it uh, started as the temple entry movement temple entry movement temple entry movement in 1927 it continued till the 1935 this movement started in a 1927 it started as the separate temple mandir for the mahar community which were earlier not allowed to do the religious ceremonies earlier the untouchables were not allowed to go in a temples but uh, through this temple entry movement ambedkar started it was set up as a separate temples for the untouchables through which they can complete their religious religious acts so all uh, as per the other other leaders came from the low caste and uh, worked amongst them they try to change those habits and the uh, practices among the low caste which provoked upper caste contempt they try to create a sense of the self esteem amongst the lower caste lower caste ambedkar devoted his entire life to fighting against of caste oppression he founded the scheduled caste federation for his, this purpose he also organized a number of non violent campaign to assert the right of the untouchables to enter in temples to enter in temples to spread the education among the lower caste dr ambedkar helped establish the bahishkir the bahishkrit hitkarni sabha bahishkrit bahishkrit the literal it means as a oppressed hitkarni sabha sabha bahishkrit hitkarni sabha or a depressed classes welfare association he believed that education would help the lower class people to improve their economic conditions to improve their economic conditions so afterwards the next name is the next social reformer as a role of a gandhi mahatma gandhi 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 ji also contributed as a improving this condition of the untouchables in society it was given a title of a harijans harijans to the untouchables harijans to untouchables which literally means as the children of god harijans literally means as the children of god children of god he strongly rejected this caste system in indian society that's why the large number of people belong from the various communities took part all those movements which were initiated by the gandhi ji in which as the uh, non cooperation movement non cooperation movement of 1920 civil disobedience movement of 1930 quit india movement of 1942 that these were the important movements in which the large number of people belong from the different communities they collectively took part collectively took part next name as the ev ramaswami ev ramaswami ev ramaswami naikar or periyar this is also known as a periyar E. V. Ramaswamy Nayakar or Periyar. So, uh, following the success of the other social reformers, 
social reformers and the movements against of the social discrimination based on caste prejudice prejudices some reformers from a non brahmin caste begin to challenge the brahmanical claims to power the most important among them was the e v ramaswami naika or periyar as he was fondly he was fondly called by his followers he became a crusader for the cause of the down trodden in down trodden in tamil nadu and campaigned against the useless ritualism he started the self respect movement and distinguished himself as the prominent leader of the justice party the name of which he later changed to the dravida kajgam it was also known as the dravida kajgam under his leadership a massive campaign was launched in organize marriages without brahmin priests the primary objective of the dravida kajgam was to champion the cause of the dravidians and socially backward caste and work and work for their upliftment so as Uh, as far as the whole, in the end, we can say that the, these social reformers, these were not to oppose, not to the challenge the society. They were directly challenge the such orthodox rituals which were blindly followed by people under the caste system. Is that clear? So this much for today. Thank you.